Good evening, friends. <laughs> Have you having, are you having a good evening? Uh, once again, uh, our thanks to our jury chair, all our distinguished jury members, and our very, very distinguished uh, winners of the IA Leadership Awards, including to Adar, the IA Business Leader of the Year Award. I'm delighted uh, today to have this conversation with a gentleman who is uh, not so sort of easy to get hold of. So let me, before we start, let me sort of, you know, tee this up in the right way. So he debuts in 1991, goes on to win a Filmfare Award, follows up with three more, then follows up with four, I believe, national awards. In the last 32 years, 115 films, aggregating a little over 5,000 crores. This is impressive, Ajay. <laughs> By any standard, this is exemplary leadership. And it is at the best because you, re you as I said, you remain, he remains quiet, he remains reticent, and would some would believe even reclusive. But you've been an actor, he's been a producer, and he's also been a director. That is passion of taking cinema to its entire level. Ajay, first, just share with us, you know, your journey these 32 years. What inspired you to get to cinema and how have you kept yourself relevant these 32 years in sort of from acting to producing to directing? Good evening, everybody. Uh, what inspired me? I think since I was, I remember, I would say, as a child, uh, cinema was always around me and was everything to me because of my father. Uh, he was one of the topmost action directors and then became a director. Uh, very innovative, uh, technically very, very strong at that point of time where we did not have that kind of technology and VFX and things like this. He would create things which were practically impossible. And uh, that fascinated me always and I learned a lot from him. I think when I was 9 or 10 years old, I started editing with him. So by 11, 11 years or 12 years, I used to, when I was 11 or 12, I used to edit the sequences he used to shoot. And uh, he got me a camera and I started shooting films in whatever capacity I could. So I loved the technology, especially uh, where cinema is concerned. So if somebody asks me, uh, what would you have been if not in films? I wouldn't know because I don't know anything else. So this, I, th I think this credit is completely my father's. I think he, he made me what I am today. No, I'm sure, I'm sure it is because it was, uh, for all of us from the industry, we know of Viruji's contribution and, and what he did, what he brought to, you know, action and bringing in that level of contemporaneous to our films uh, way back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. But over the last three decades, uh, friends, uh, I'm not too sure how much you're aware. I'm sure you've seen Ajay's films and uh, his ability to sort of move from action uh, to complete wacky comedy to being uh, involved in a thriller like Drisham to actually portraying, you know, uh, a character from our history like Tanaji, which, by the way, in 2020 went on to becoming the large the biggest grossing film aggregating 279 crores. You've emerged as one of the tallest actors, uh, undoubtedly, Ajay. Uh, and you've shown immense leadership uh, and entrepreneurial zest. And that's really what I want to talk about. Because from being a producer uh, to now owning a studio, to even entering the world of, uh, you've, you've started, NYFXwala, and you've started a cinema chain, you've acquired a cinema chain, NY Cinemas in New York. Uh, NY, by the way, are, is, is an acronym for Nisa and Yug, his two children. Tell us about, you know, 
your journey from the creative side into the business aspect of cinema because you've chosen also very apt. I think uh, VFX is a phenomenal area. Uh, what is NY VFX Wala been doing? So like I said, uh, I've always loved the technical side of filmmaking. And uh, we used to always feel that uh, at one point of time that we can't do what Hollywood can do. You know, we, we used to struggle because we didn't have that kind of technology and people weren't trained in that manner. And uh, I was, like I said, I was, since I was a kid, I was always fascinated uh, to do something which would make us stand at par with Hollywood. And uh, I remember the first time VFX was used, I, I used it in a film called Pyar Do Raitha, I think that was 98, 99, where the first uh, machine had come in. Nobody knew how to use it, and I was the first one to do it. So there are a lot of firsts I've tried to do because I love to upgrade, you know. And and that's how slowly I went on to start uh, starting a VFX studio of my own, which is Touchwood, uh, one of the best uh, VFX studios in the country, and you can it can compete with anywhere in Hollywood. And uh, there are lots of cameras and technologies which I try to bring in it, bring it in first time. They were expensive, but now everybody's using it. So it's that passion towards filmmaking, complete filmmaking, where you talk about cinemas. Um, if you if you visit any of our cinemas, you will have a different experience completely. It's not like a regular cinema, so you need to go there and see it. So it's that passion of experience of watching a film or making a film where audiences go in and watch a film also. They should have a very different experience. I think it's just that passion and that love of cinema and I would like to keep doing that till I... Uh, no, keep at it because that kind of teased me up to you. You talked three, four times about technology and uh, where we sit today, uh, media, we, you know, this is a forum which is essentially made up of media, marketeers, agencies and uh, we're at this amazing culmination of, you know, where media storytelling, technology, these worlds are kind of coming together. Almost like a cube-like sense, you know, you can move from audio to video to games to VFX to uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. When you find so much change happening, today our platforms where consumers are going to are no longer just cinema halls. They get it at home, you know, uh, OTT platforms. The whole style of movie making with VFX has gone into a narrative which is so immersive. Tell us, you know, how do you see as, as a leader of, you know, Hindi cinema, what's your outlook the next five, ten years? Uh, do you see audiences adapting or do you see storytellers embracing these mediums? Uh... In the sense, the storytellers need to need to need to grow and change with the changing times and with uh, the audiences. Um, there was a point where uh, we weren't exposed to so much of international cinema, and uh, now because of the OTT platforms and the technology and the connectivity and the internet, I think everybody is watching everything, and we have a competition. We have a competition in the sense where quality of films is concerned, storytelling is concerned. Uh, you also have to adapt to the newer generation, the way they started. I mean, I learned a lot from my children and their friends. Uh, you know, so many times, uh, my my daughter, she watches a film and she's watching it on 2x. Yes. And I'm like, how, right. how, how can you understand a film on 2x? You're going so fast. And she says, no, I got the point and this is how, otherwise it gets very boring. So you need to learn that, you know, patience is running out. They are on... Insta, they're, you know, they, the patients are not more than 30 seconds. They keep changing. So how do you engage the audience and keep the audience engaged is the most important thing. And for us, filmmaking can be on OTT, theaters. Theater experience can never go, I would say, because it's, it's a different experience watching a, watching a big film on, uh, on, uh, on screen. But yes, we have to decide what to make for theaters and what to make for OTT. So we need to adapt ourselves. Sure. So, and since you talk about your daughter, Lisa, by the way, who's 20, and my daughter is 18 and a half, and this 1.5 or 2x is a standard. It comes to them from their learning, you know, because in YouTube, they'll just go and they learn at that speed itself. So that's it. But I'm sure, you know, your son who's younger, 
he's probably already multitasking because whilst he may be watching something on the screen, but he's playing they a game at the same time. They all yeah. do. They all can do so many things. We, we need to concentrate on one thing and they are multitasking and they're doing five things at a time and they are doing it perfectly. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and that is what, as I said, you know, brings us to the world of media, entertainment, gaming, the metaverse, all kind of converging. My last question to you, because we are an audience like this. Uh, uh, Ajay, you've, you've been a brand that's, you know, sort of sustained and grown over the last 32 years. Uh, the IA, as I mentioned, is a body which is, uh, represents the best of media and agencies, etc. You've endorsed numerous brands. Uh, just out of curiosity, say in the last five, 10 years, can you name me two brands that you believe did justice to your persona and they in turn benefited as well? You know, how can you name maybe two of those commercials which um, strike out for you? I can, but I wouldn't. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take to that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think uh, anything you'd like to tell the audience before what's new coming in 23? What are some of the films that are coming? Uh, the film which I've just completed is uh, Maidan, which is a lovely uh, true story uh, in the 50s. Uh, when uh, I, I, I don't think a lot of people know about it, but uh, when it was the golden era of football for India. India, was, India won the Asia Cup but because of only one man. And uh, it's his story. So that will be out soon. And uh, right now, I would be starting to shoot for a film called Singam, which is Singam 3. Fantastic. Ajay, we wish you all the very best. And once again, on behalf of IA, I thank you for sort of extending and being this exemplary leader that you have been for in Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.